The Chinese language. It is the oldest continuously written language in the world. It was first written over 4,500 years ago. The inventors of the written language drew pictures to express words or ideas. Simple pictures were combined to make more complex thoughts. For example, in the ancient Chinese culture, the older brother was the spokesperson for the family. This is possibly why the character for elder brother is the mouth man. If you add the ancient Chinese writings of mouth and man together, it makes the word elder brother. Well-known history and common everyday things were used to make a word so people could remember it. Before Buddha, the Chinese people worshipped the same god described in the Bible. The proof is in the ancient Chinese characters. Shang Di was the god of China before Buddha. He was the creator god, and animal sacrifice was offered to him. During the first three dynasties of China, Xia, Shang, and Chao, the Chinese people worshipped Shang Di. Worship of Buddha came to China from India in about 50 BC. The God of the Bible was reintroduced to China when foreigners came from Europe. Many in China believe that the Bible is a Western book. They believe it is simply myth and fable written by Western men. They think of it as an English book. However, the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Hebrew and Greek. The first writers of the Bible were from Egypt and Babylon, which today is Iraq. The first five books of the Bible were written in 1400 BC by Moses, an adopted son of the king of Egypt. These five books focus on the beginning of the nation of Israel. The first 11 chapters record the history that all nations have in common. Could the ancient Chinese people have known the same history recorded in the Bible? Let's consider the Bible stories and some of the traditional Chinese characters. Then from the evidence, you can determine for yourself whether the connection is a coincidence or by design. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. They said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. The nations and languages were divided 5,000 years ago. The division took place 500 years before the oldest written language was created. The languages of the people were divided. The people were scattered over the earth. If the Bible is true, and it surely is, all nations migrated or moved from Babylon. The Chinese would have migrated or walked from the west to China. If you add the ancient Chinese writings of great, division, west, and walk all together, it makes up the word migrate. Is this just all some random coincidence? Not at all. But this is true history. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. If you add the ancient Chinese writings of dust, breath or mouth, and alive all together, it makes out the word to talk. If you add the ancient Chinese writings of to talk and walk, it makes up the word to create. The character for breath or mouth can also represent the words man or person. Isn't it interesting that within the word for to create is found the characters representing a living dust person? According to the Bible, the first man was a living dust man. If you had the ancient Chinese writings of alive, dust, and man all together, it makes the word first. According to the Chinese language, is it possible that 4,500 years ago, the people of China also believed the first man to be created from dust? In the beginning, God and man had close fellowship. This leads to true happiness. If you had the ancient Chinese writings of God, one, man, and garden all together, it makes the word happiness or blessing. In the beginning, God placed man in a beautiful garden or paradise. In the garden, God blessed man. In the garden, God and man enjoyed close fellowship, but something happened to destroy man's happiness and his close relationship with God. Man disobeys God and must leave the garden because of his sin. Man's guilt separates him from God. A child in ancient China may have asked, where did the first man come from? 
Where was the garden in which the first man once lived in fellowship with God? This character from the Chinese language answers the question clearly. And God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Here you can see the ancient character that means west, which comes from the words one, person, and enclosed garden added all together. The Bible says after God created the man and placed him in the garden, he told the man to name all the animals. After seeing all the birds of the air and the beasts of the field, the man still desired someone like himself. And God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper suited for him. If you add the ancient characters of West and woman together, it makes the word to want or desire. Why would the creators of the Chinese characters choose two words, West, which indicates a direction, and woman to mean desire? It makes no sense unless we remember. One man in a garden in the West was the first to desire a woman. If you add the ancient characters of two and people, it makes the word beginning or first. In the beginning, God made two people. They were the first people. The Bible says, And the Lord God made a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had made. And out of the earth the Lord made every tree to come, delighting the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God gave the man orders, saying, You may freely take of the fruit of every tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you may not take. For on the day when you take of it, death will certainly come to you. Man was forbidden to eat one of the two trees. If he ate the forbidden tree, the other would be taken from him also. If he had the ancient characters of two trees and command, it makes the word forbidden. Now the snake was wiser than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God truly said that you may not take of the fruit of any tree in the garden? And the woman said, We may take of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God has said, If you take of it or put your hands on it, death will come to you. And the snake said, Death will certainly not come to you. For God sees that on the day when you take of its fruit, your eyes will be open, and you will be as God's having knowledge of good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. If you add the ancient characters of two trees and woman together, it makes the word to covet or desire. If you add the ancient characters of life or motion and secret or private and garden and man all together, it makes the word devil or Satan. If you add the ancient characters of cover and two trees and devil or Satan all together, it makes the word tempter. Isn't it interesting that 4,500 years ago, the ancient Chinese people also associated the devil with a garden and two trees? If you add the ancient characters of man and fruit together, it makes the word naked. If you add the ancient characters of clothing and fruit together, it also makes a form of the word naked. After eating the fruit, they wore clothing to cover their nakedness. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy conception. In pain thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. If you add the ancient characters of a piece and two trees together, it makes the word pain. And to Adam he said, Because you gave ear to the voice of your wife and took of the fruit of the tree which I said you were not to take, the earth is cursed on your account. In pain you will get your food from it all your life. Thorns and weeds will come up, and the plants of the field will be your food. With the hard work of your hands you will get your bread till you go back to the earth from which you were taken. For dust you are, and to the dust you will go back. If you add the writings of ancient and weeds together, it makes the word sorrow. With God's help, Adam and Eve had two sons. The older brother, Cain, worked the land, and the younger brother, Abel, kept sheep. In time, Cain offered some of its fruit of the land to the Lord, and Abel offered some of the firstborn of his flocks. The Lord looked with favor on Abel's offering, Cain became very angry. He attacked and killed his brother Abel. And the Lord said, Truly, if Cain is put to death, seven lives will be taken for his. 
And the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one might put him to death. The first older brother in the Bible was violent. The words for elder son and violent are both pronounced shun. Man's guilt of sin separated him from fellowship with God. But God provided a way for man's relationship with him to be restored through sacrifice. Just as in the story from the Bible, the ancient Chinese people knew that the sacrifice of a lamb brought righteousness and God's favor. If you add the ancient characters of hand and lance together, it makes the word me. And if you add the ancient characters of me and sheep together, it makes the word righteousness. Jesus Christ is known as the unblemished lamb of God. He was crucified for our sins, and by his perfect sacrifice, he has reconciled us back to God through faith in the finishing work of Jesus Christ. No man is righteous of their own. We need the Lamb of God, and it's by grace and through faith in him that we are declared righteous and forgiven of our sins. All of those animal sacrifices and offerings to God throughout history was only a shadow and prophecy of Jesus Christ. He himself is the perfect sacrifice. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 it says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. It was all about Jesus Christ. He is the unblemished Lamb of God. He was without sin. And He suffered and died on the cross. And He resurrected to glory on the third day. He is now exalted at the right hand of God. And He is coming back to judge the whole world by righteousness. The Lord is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Come to God now and he can change you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't try to get yourself clean and then come to God. Come as you are now and God will cleanse you if you truly surrender to him. The Great Flood And the earth was evil in God's eyes and full of violent ways. And God looking on the earth saw that it was evil. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come, and now I will put an end to them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood with rooms in it and make it safe from the water inside and out. For truly, I will send a great flood of waters over the earth. Everything on the earth will come to an end. But with you, I will make an agreement, and you will come into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. This is the ancient Chinese character for boat. What is the character for a large ocean-going vessel? If you add the ancient Chinese characters of person, eight, and boat all together, it makes the word large ship. Why would the ancient Chinese writers choose these three characters? After the flood, what was the total population of the earth? Noah, his wife, three sons, and their wives. That was eight people. If we add the ancient characters of eight, united, and earth all together, it makes the word total. If we add the characters of total and water together, it makes the word flood. How did the ancient people of China know these things? They did not have a Bible. Remember that well-known history and common everyday things were used to make a word so people could remember it. If we add the ancient characters of mouth, eight, and water all together, it means to hand down or to continue. May God bless you all, and remember to always pray and to keep watch, for the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back very soon.